what role, if any, should manufacturing play in the competitive United States? I can think, frankly, of no better place in the world to discuss this topic than Michigan, the Detroit area, and the grounds of the Henry Ford. If you look back at the end of the 60s and early 1970s, there was a lot of stuff that could be made in the U.S. that couldn't be made anywhere else in the world. And that was a result of long-term investments in education, basic science research, particularly post-World War II, absolute domination of mass manufacturing, coming back to Henry Ford here. We'll have a discussion of Bill George's case on the resurgence of the big three automakers. This first time I've been with these guys on one of these competitiveness um, outreach efforts, they said, hey, we're going to Detroit. You're from Detroit, why don't you come along? And I thought, okay, this is great. And then I read the case and I'm thinking, oh my God, you know, this is, uh, this is gonna be an interesting discussion. GM in 2008, 2009 lost in net income $74 billion. What accounts for this? Sarah. Arrogance and denial. Arrogance and denial. Boy, don't hold back. <laughs> but these are smart people. I don't understand. They're just going to wait for this to happen? The collapse of the credit market contributed to the decline as well. The cards were up uh, flashing everywhere. A lot of passion on the issue. I come from a, the supplier perspective. When the OEM catches a cold, the supply base catches pneumonia. Quite a few of the larger suppliers uh, went bankrupt uh, a year or more ahead of um, when GM went bankrupt. There's a domino effect. If one of the suppliers or multiple suppliers fail and they're providing a key component, to deliver a vehicle like this, you can't actually sell that vehicle. You don't want to be as dependent on one industry as Detroit has been historically. It can actually make the whole commons, the whole uh, network fall. To help it revive actually took the integration of the supply base, the labor folks management, as well as external support from the financial and, and ultimately government. Okay, so this is ongoing union relationship change. One of the things that the forced bankruptcy did and the rapid bankruptcy did was enable General Motors and Chrysler to transform to a different type of business model that was more competitive, something that ironically the companies couldn't do on their own. The leaders decided that, look, if we keep on this win-lose approach, everyone's going to lose. Really, it was these three people, uh, Marcioni, Malali, and now Dan Ackerson, that went forward and agreed on a doubling of the cafe standards. I found it stunning. And even asked Malali, do you know how to do this? He said, no, we don't know how to do it, but we have good, great technology, we'll get there. And you're saying we've, we've you know, flushed out the management system, different leaders, and now we're on a better track that will persist that way. Is it gonna stick? Show of hands from the room. It depends on how they play their hand. I don't think we can attribute success to them yet. I don't necessarily know that they're failing either. I hope to goodness they're having some really um, difficult soul searching discussions in the boardrooms right now. There's still that tendency to look at suppliers at an arm's length instead of looking at it as an extended factory. One of the things that vitally needs to be done are supplier network vital, innovative, creative suppliers. Any industry needs to consider what their supplier community is and take a strategic view of that supplier community. Whether it's automobiles or toasters, you know, it doesn't really matter. All these companies, and I know GM Best, has to decide what they want to be best at. No longer can we afford the all of the above. We just won't be competitive. I was interviewing factory workers in Mexico. She says, I know this company that I'm working for is competing with China, and if we're not competitive, I won't have a job. I hear that not only in Mexico, I hear it in other parts of the world. I don't hear it enough in the U.S. You talk about leadership, but the leaders are you. You're the leaders that have to make this community go. And a community is only as strong as the leaders in the community. Those of us that have an opportunity to take a, a leadership role or a role of responsibility need to step up and do it. I think it's the role of every business leader to invest in upgrading the commons, not out of altruism, not out of patriotism, but just because it's good business. To be part of the team that's making that difference. We've seen the suppliers go under. We need to have a supplier resurgence. Why should the Germans do so much of the advanced technology in the automobile industry? It makes no sense to me. Why can't it be done right here? America's strength is in entrepreneurship, innovation, high technology, and high skilled manufacturing. And this is a good place to start to lead the country forward in doing it. So what I'm asking is, will each of you step up and make a commitment right now to do that? It's a privilege to be here. If you'll make that commitment, we'll stand with you and support you every step of the way.